shining in you for all the world to see. That will be a joy to him. That is his plan for our lives, that his glory shines forth through us, that light that he has placed in us, his glory shining for all the world to see. Father, we thank you. We come before your presence, Lord, with thanksgiving, with a heart of praise. Lord, we magnify you this day. We thank you for this day, for this is a day that you have made. And we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Father, I thank you for each and every one that have assembled themselves in this place on this day. We thank you for the special blessings and the anointing power, Lord, that you are placing within us right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the body of Christ as a whole, Lord, wherever they are assembling, our bishop, first lady, our members, those that are with them at St. John's, Lord, and the churches all over this world, your people all over this world, as we come together, oh God, to magnify and glorify you, Lord. Let your glory shine for all the world to see. Let your will be done, O oh God. We surrender ourselves totally, wholly, completely unto you that your will may be done. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be found acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my strength, you are my redeemer. These blessings I ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Oh, Wes, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is one of my favorite praise songs that you and Ness taught us. I love that song. I start singing that song, boy, and the praises, the tears start flowing, and I get to praying and singing in the spirit, and. I said, Lord, I can't sing it anymore when I'm driving the bus. I, <laughs> woo! I just got, uh, Lord, Holy Spirit, take the wheel because I can't do this right now. But I thank and praise God, saints. I have so much joy down on the inside of me. I just don't know what to do with myself anymore. But I thank and praise God for who he is in my life. I get joy when I think about. That was one of the first songs I learned when I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. And when I first started singing that song, the beat gave me joy. So we sing it, Mr. Sheila, back at, um, at, in, in Chester, Pennsylvania, St. Mary, we sing the song. Seventh and Dunbar, we sing the song. Wherever we had church, that song, they sang that song. And that, that's a song that's in my heart in Atlantic City. We sang the song, Mother. I get joy, when, and I, I can see Elder Hollis on the scrub board, and Sister Alvina, uh, not um, El, Elvira on the tambourine, because she would beat that tambourine. And whenever that song started up, the church went up. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. But as a young born-again believer, I didn't fully understand what that joy really was because I was thinking about the beat to the song and then it got to a point where what God had given me and that was all good. The Lord had blessed me with my husband. He was a good man and my children, they were healthy and doing well. My mom, everybody, my, all my sisters, they were there in church with us and we were having a good time. And not understanding the full meaning of the joy of Jesus Christ what he had given to me, all that he had given to me, all that he gave up so that I could have it all. But as I begin to grow in grace and in the knowledge of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I began to understand, I came to know truly what that joy was because it was that joy that was set before him that gave him the strength, that gave him the commitment to give up all to die for us. That joy that was set before him, for him to be tormented, tortured, beaten, nailed to a tree for me, for us. That's the joy I'm talking about. 
Well, this morning, saints, the Lord gave me a message. I was sharing with a couple of my sweet sisters and um, Elder Fred. I was sharing with them this morning after Sunday school. I said, well, I might as well get up at the um, rostrum and say, now made, I'm not going to say we made the Lord watch, but got the word, got the word, got the word. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but the Lord gave me this message the beginning of February, and I, I just started working on it. And he just gave me just one little scripture um, dealing with Paul. And I, I, it just struck my spirit. So it's not a scripture I've never read before, never heard before, pl heard it plenty of times. We've quoted it plenty of times. We've, we've studied it. We've had it in Bible study, Sunday school. But for some apparent reason, the Lord just, the spirit struck my, my spirit very deeply with this, this verse of scripture. And it came out in Sunday school so strongly through so many different ones that I said, Father, you know, I, I just, I'm used to it now. You know, I said, I looked up, I said, you, you just have such a sense of humor, don't you? <laughs> and I was sitting in Sunday school and I wanted to talk and just, y'all know how I talk and share so much, but I, I just couldn't. Because I said, well, Lord, if I do it, I'm just going to just give the message. So what's the point of me, you know, even getting up after, you know, everything's done, all the preliminaries and minister if I give it all there? I didn't have to give it all there because Elder, Elder Heather, Elder Fred, Deaconess, they, they all gave it out for me. But the Holy Spirit says, you don't have a patent on my word. And that that I give you. But it, what the Lord showed me was the oneness that we have here at New Life. Amen. That one spirit. And what he has given to me, he's given to us all. And this is what the Lord wants us to know today. Amen. So if you will turn with me to the book of Philippians, the third chapter. And my topic for us today is don't give in, keep pressing. Don't give in, Amen. keep pressing. Philippians 3.13 reads, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended or achieved. This is what Paul is saying. But this one thing I do, this one thing I am focused on, forgetting those things which are behind, those things that used to hold me back, that parachute that's holding me back from getting to where God wants me to do. Elder Heather brought out, and I've seen football players and different ones um, in the different Air Force, the Air, um, I'm saying Air Forces, but the Armed Forces, in their training, they attach parachutes to them, themselves, and it's to build strength and stamina. And when she brought that out, I said, Lord, I didn't have that in my message, but that sounds good. <laughs> I'm going to use that. The things that we have attached to us that holds us back, our past life, our scripture, we can't see it all, but we know what our mission scripture is here at New Life in Christ Ministries. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature or a new created being. The old things are past. Behold, all things are become new. And we're going to talk about those all things because our golden, our, 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 the golden verse for our, our um, lesson was talking about all things. Because the Lord said, with men, this is impossible, but not with God. With God, all things are possible. So we're going to talk about those all things too. But Paul wants us to forget those things which are behind. Don't let them become a stumbling block to you. We are saints. We are so close. And Satan knows this. We are so close. We're so close I can almost see myself there with all the saints that are in glory, giving God all the praise and honor that's due unto him, sitting at that table and enjoying one another's presence in the Lord. And just the song came to me this week, oh, I want to see him to look upon his face. There to sing forever yeah. of his saving grace yeah. on the streets of glory. Yeah. Let me lift my voice. Things I'm going to be screaming. I ain't got to worry about the, the post-nasal drip choking me up. But I'm going to sing as loud as I can. Cares are past. I'm home at last ever to rejoice. The time is so close. They, they have that saying, I could almost taste it. 
I feel it in my, the core of my being. We're so close. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't let, see, Satan's job, his job is to keep, his purpose is to keep you looking back. All right, go ahead, go ahead, is go to ahead. keep you hungering and desiring over, over the things that, that deals with this. All right, go ahead, go ahead. But God wants us to stay focused. Stay focused. When Paul said, I press, he wasn't talking about just moving things out the way. His press was so intense. It's, it's just like having that parachute and you're determined, I'm going to make it all the way to that line. I'm going to run all the way. I don't care what it is. I'm going all the way. Yeah. Satan is making the way hard now. Turn around, look, just look around. Now, we know a few of our saints are in South Carolina. But there's what? I think, how many went on the van? Three, five? Let me see. Deacon? Yeah, one well, that one. No. Four. Four went on the van. Who, what fifth one? Dot. Deacon Dorrance. And the Nedricks. Oh, Sister Gloria. Okay, six in the van, 15 passengers now. And three flew. Uh -huh. So that's nine folk. Nine folk. <laughs> There's a press going on. Amen. And it shows us that we're in the last days. Right. Satan is making it easy. And if they, did, if they got to spring forward, yeah. it would have made them early, not late. <laughs> Am I right? Okay, so it ain't that, oh, they're going to be an hour late. Maybe in the fall. No, not now. They'd be here early waiting for us. Because this Sheila was the Sheila's mother. They came up, Deacon it went. We came and had our prayer. Deacon went and got some paper towels. And they came up, Sister Sheila said, oh, lights are on. But this door don't open. We heading back the other way. <laughs> but thank God for people with a heart to serve God. Saints, it's not about us. That song says, not about us, it's about Jesus. It's more than you could ever imagine. Because the enemy's going to come on you. Let me, I'm going to tell you, and I'm not giving him any glory, no way, shape, or form. This is just a warning for us. He's going to come against you so now. And this is, what the, this is what the Spirit of the Lord told me. He says, you know all those emotions that you get all caught up in? That ain't of me. That's of the flesh. Don't let your emotions control you. My granddaughter, Natalia, had, had me and, and her pop-up watching this, this um, animated show or movie called Inside Out. Anybody ever see that? Is that the cutest show? Inside Out. It's a movie about this little girl, and I'm not going to tell y'all. Y'all can go watch it, but it is the cutest show. But it, it, it does reveal to us why we react the way we do. Now, I'm not saying you got little things up in your head pushing buttons and pulling levers to make you act the way you do. But what I'm saying is there's two individuals that will try and do certain things in your life, in your heart, to cause it to show outwardly. We want the right one Hello. there Hello. having control yes. to bring out mm -hmm. who we are. Too many of us step out of character. And when we step out of character, we know who's in control. Okay, so we're living in a time now where Paul is telling us, forget those things which are behind. That, that rich young ruler had things in his life, and he had a heart. He wanted, he, he, he wanted the Lord, so he thought. He didn't realize what was holding fast in him. He didn't realize it. And the, the enemy will take things and hide them. He will put things in, within us and put it behind a stronghold to cause us to not even know that it's there. But when we sincerely go to the Lord, like this young man did, he sincerely went to God, and God revealed to him where he was falling short. And now it's up to us to receive, Lord, you're right. Now help me to deal with this. Help me to get this out of my life. Only you, God. With men, it's impossible. But God, with you, all things are possible. But when you have a heart to want to do it, if you're not letting things hold you back, 
if you don't have, like Elder Fred, that luggage, that baggage that you had, because the Lord says, come as you are. He didn't say take that stuff and put it away in the shelf or in the shed or uh, wherever and then come to me. He said, come as you are. So when we come to him, we come with full baggage. Some of us are pulling wagons. Some of us are pulling U-Hauls. Some got trailers, the moving vans. But no matter how much you got, he said, come to me as you are. Let me handle that. Let me take care of that. You just give me your heart. Because once we give him our heart, that's what God wants. Our whole heart. We talk about stumbling blocks. Things that are thrown, the enemy throws in our way. The only thing he can throw in our path is our own weaknesses. He don't have no new tricks. He don't have a bag of tricks. They go, well, that didn't work. Let me try this. That didn't work. Let me try this. He knows our weaknesses because we tell him our weaknesses. We think we're talking to one another, but he's sitting in on the conversation. Mm -hmm. Take that note. Get that note. And he doesn't come to you in a scary, spooky way. He'll come to you designed or disguised as what? An angel of light. He comes to us as an angel of light. I, I believe in God. What God? Good question to ask. What God? But even if you don't ask the question, just watch them a little bit. They'll reveal to you what God they believe in. They'll reveal to you what God they're following. But if you start talking to them about Jesus, that's the key word. And they, mm -mm, the girl, I got, look, I, I, got, I got something I got to do. I, I'll get with you later. They ain't got time for Jesus. That's your key right there. Red flag, the blood of Jesus. Red flag. But the Lord wants us to watch. Satan's job is to constantly remind us of our past failures. Wow. And when you get your eyes on that, then he got you. Yeah. Forgetting those things which are behind. Yes, for sure. yeah. Amen. The Lord has. Yeah. He's cast our sins far away mm -hmm. into the sea of forgetfulness. Yeah. Yeah. He said, I will remember their sin no more Hallelujah. once we become his. Don't let the enemy trick you and trap you into thinking that you messed up again. If God, if the, the blood that Jesus shed on the cross while we were yet sinners is powerful enough to forgive us of our sins, what sin can we commit to throw us back out of other than rejecting the Holy Spirit? What sin can, can Satan throw up in our face and say, you lied to him, you done. Forget it, you're done. You stole that? Ooh. You messed up, you're done. Once you're under the blood of Jesus, once the grace of God has taken hold of your life, there's nothing the enemy can do unless you let him. Forget those things which are behind and press. Lord, I don't feel like it. Press. Amen. I want to talk to you a little bit. Oh, I've got to watch this show. Press. Yeah. Read my word. Oh, but oh. Mm, Big Bang Theory is coming on. <laughs> read my word. Yeah. Go to St. John and read 14. What, I, don't, I, I don't know what other shows come on, but y'all know. Mm. God, pour my name. Read my word. <laughs> Press, press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't let the enemy have his way. Amen. We're too close to turn back now. Amen. John 10 and 10 says the thief, mm. the purpose of the thief is to steal, <laughs> kill, right. destroy. Mm. He doesn't want us to make it. And the angels asked, what is man that you're so mindful of him? What is about this creation, this man, this, this being that you've created, that you're so, so hooked and so concerned and so dedicated and committed? What? Look at them. They mess up constantly. Why? They're mine. 
because they're mine. God doesn't give up. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He will not give up. He came that we may have life right here and then have it more abundantly right here. Not just to give us life, but to give us abundant life. In all of our mess, to give us abundant life. Oh, how he loves me and you. You and me. He gave his life. What more can he give? Oh, Jesus, I love you. Paul said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. To move into a position, press means to move into a position to, of contact with something by exerting continuous physical force. I keep pressing to move in a specific direction by pushing, praying until something happens. Okay? I keep pressing. I keep pushing. I keep going on. I keep looking unto Jesus. I press toward the mark. Even when I miss the mark, I get right back in position and I keep pressing. Moving towards in a direction towards a specific goal. And, and then staying in the way. Because Jesus said, I am the way. When you stay in the way, you stay in Jesus. Don't get in the way, but stay in the way. Sometimes we get in people's way by our opinion or our good intentions. But when we get into the word of God, when we stay in his word, see, this, this is what, Elder Fred, you said, when you can have the Bible laid open and it'll draw a person's attention. It'll pull, it, it's, it, it's powerful. This is not just a book, white paper with black and red letters. This is powerful. The Lord showed me that his word is his power. That's why he's told Peter, when he asked the disciples, he says, who does men say that I am? And they begin to go down the list. Some say you're Elijah, some say you're the prophet, some say you're Jeremiah. He said, but who do you say I am? Now I'm going to hit home. Who do you think I am? I know who I am, but who do you say that I am? And Peter steps up. He's the spokesman. We learned that. Peter, being the spokesman, spokesman of, the, of the group, says, Well, thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And the Lord looked at him and said, You think you're smart? You ain't even come up with that. It ain't no man tell you that. But my Father, which is in heaven, revealed it to you. So you could speak it out of your mouth so all the other ones could hear and know who I am. I know who I am. You're Peter, meaning rock. And upon this rock, not Peter, but the word that he spoke, the word that he spoke from above is what he's building his church on. Amen. Saints, we're standing on a firm foundation. And nothing, I don't care how big the earthquake is, I don't care how high the tsunami is, cannot shake it. How many saw that video on YouTube where the guy's car caught fire and burnt up, and the only thing that was left in that, out of that fire was a Bible? They pulled a Bible out of a con totally consumed vehicle. Wow. And the, the one of the, I think he was a preacher or whoever he was, he, he was talking about how the word of God, you know, remaining. Yes. And I, I, my reply was, everything, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word <laughs> will stand forever. Amen. It has stood the test of time. Amen. They have tried to destroy it, yes. but they can't do it. It's power in the word of God. Saints, let me tell you, and the Lord showed me this years ago, and when I, 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 when I finally grabbed hold of this 2016, and y'all know what my message was, getting to know him, I said, Father, as much as possible, you help me. Help me to read your word. I, like I, I told y'all on Wednesday, I take my phone and put it on speaker and have my, my phone sitting on the side, and I have, have the word playing so I can hear while I'm driving my bus. I, have, I can't put the things in my ears, so I got to play it loud so, that, so I can hear it. And I just listen to the word. I put it, lay it while I'm in the bed. I, 
Mother said, I got to get me something. We went to Florida. Get me something so I can read because I get tired holding the Bible up when I'm laying in bed. We had to get Mother a Kindle so she can listen to the Word. <laughs> mother, if you fall asleep, the Word will still be playing for you. You can wake up to the Word. God's Word transforms. You may not be understanding what you're reading or what you're listening to, but the Word of God is doing something, saints. It's making a change within you that you don't even realize that when a situation or circumstances come up, you stand bold and the word of God starts spewing out of you and you're like, what, where, who? <laughs> That's what the power of the word of God does for you. Amen. Nothing moves you. Psalm 119, 165th Psalm verse says, great peace have those who love thy law. And nothing will cause them to be offended. Or if you read it in the NIV or at the L NLT, it says nothing will cause them to stumble. Amen. Nothing. I don't care what the enemy try to throw out at you. It may hurt you a little bit, but it won't cause you to stumble. Right. You will not fall out of the way. You will not give up on God. You will not blame God foolishly because you know what his word says to you. You know in your heart, in your very being, as well as you know your own name. And guess what? You're going to get a new one. That's going to change you. You ain't got to hold too tight to that one. Wear everything that pertains to this world like a loose garment because it's going to fall off one day. And that that God has in store for you, that great reward, nothing that we can give up. Nothing that we can give up. And I, I was sharing the story of Job. When Job went through all the turmoil and everything, all the loss that he had went through, and, and it wasn't like this year and then five years down the road, this comes up, and then another 10 years that came up. I believe it all happened within a day or two that he lost everything, everything. And then on top of that, the next day he loses his health. So he lost everything that the world could give you somewhat, and that was to show us, you know, we, we talk about black history and not to knock black history and, and our roots or anything, but when I accepted Christ in my life, I begin to see my life differently. And I begin to see my roots in Christ. Many of black people have done great things in this world, but none of them died for me. They, a lot of them died, but none of them could die for me. A lot of them have said, we died so that you could have, but none of them truly died for me. Only one died for me, for me to have everlasting life. We're living in a time now, saints, anything could happen. When I, 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 I can't stomach watching our political races. It hurts, it hurts me. It hurts me so bad, it hurts me to tears. My first time saying that, but it really does. When I see how they make this democracy such a joke and how other countries look at this great country that God has given to us and they look at it as a joke. They, they're laughing at these great United States of America, and, and that men can stand there and act like they're so great and so this and that, and it takes me back to that king who stood and said how great he was and all that he has accomplished and what he has done, and what did God do to him? And this is why when we see this, we pray. We pray. I don't rely on not one man or woman as my source in this world. And we can't. I don't care if it's Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, SSI, SS, whatever. We cannot rely on man for nothing. And when the Lord asked that rich young ruler, sell whatsoever you have and follow me, you show me what you have in your life that is so great that will cause you to reject Jesus and hold on to that, that is temporal. Press, keep pressing. 
John 14 and 6 says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is our way. Romans, the sixth chapter of Romans, and I wanted to read that whole chapter, but y'all go home today, and if nothing else, before you do anything else, you can have your cup of tea, coffee, or whatever with you while you're sitting there doing it, a couple cookies or whatever, but read the sixth chapter of Romans in its entirety. The sixth chapter of Romans. I'm going to do the first two verses. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? When Satan throws something up in your face that used to be, first of all, look at him like, what are you talking about? Even if you know what he's talking about, what are you talking about? My father doesn't know anything about that, so neither do I. I'm a new creation being. That's not me. That person no longer lives. Dead to sin. A dead person can't be active in things. When we have home goings and we look at the shell that's there, that, sh that shell doesn't get up and sing and, and w walk around and do the things we do. It's there, hard, cold, there. That person that was in the past, hard, cold, dead. Amen. This new person now, maybe in the flesh, but guess what? I ain't who I used to be. That song, I looked at my hands, my hands look new, looked at my feet, they did too. Bishop said, no, nah, they still look the same, but they ain't the same because they don't do the same things that they used to do. They don't go to the same places that they used to go to. They don't participate. My members do not participate in things that does not pertain in praising God. Wow. So the dances that I now do is a dance of, of glory. It's a dance of joy. When I lift up my hands, it's to give him praise. When I use them for whatever I use them for, it prospers because I'm doing it for his glory. Forget those things which are behind. We read 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. James 4 and 7 says, oh, I wanted to go to 2 Corinthians. If any man be in Christ, he is a new, cre new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things, these are the all things we're talking about, all things are of God. The all things that we're talking about, where, where God said in Mark 10 and 10, or 10 and 27, with man it's impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. So these all things that we're talking about pertains to God, pertains to heavenly things, pertains to those good and perfect gifts. Those are the all things. So when people get caught up, and we mean by all things, so I can do whatever I want, all things, all things of God. Yeah. This is what we're talking about. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Elder Fred, that's what you was doing. When what was his name, John, came up into the house, the same way we were reconciled, we got to go reconcile people back to him. Amen. We got to speak the word to them. We may not know how to, but don't the Lord open up the way for us to do it. He put the words in your mouth of what to say. Don't get yourself all worked up. I don't know how to talk to this one. Why am I gonna, what am I supposed to say? How am I supposed to say it? I finally, the women start coming back to the, um, the Jehovah's Witness, start coming back to my house. <laughs> but I was on my way out to get on the bus, so I didn't get a chance to talk with them. But um, I, it don't matter to me. I was sitting in the office on Friday, and me and Jane, I was sharing with Jane about um, the Lord giving us the power to get wealth, and that power being his word. Speak word over your situations. Don't stop asking God to do this and to do that. 
God is saying, I've already done it. Don't you remember when my son hung on the cross and said, it is finished? And then he came and gave the great commission and he said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom when he spoke to Peter. He meant that for all of us. Stop telling me to do it when you have given, when I've given you the authority to do it. Speak over the situations in your life. Young people, y'all too. Don't just let sitting up in here, just be, I'm just sitting up in here because I have to sit up in here. Use that word. Use the word of God to, for his glory in your situations, in your schoolwork, when you're playing sports, whatever. I thank God. I've, I've seen where my granddaughter, when, when she's running track and the group get around them and they're praying before they start running. Or the football players, they're kneeling on the field and they're praying to God. Or they're in the locker room and they're kneeling and praying in the NFL. Giving God the glory. Amen. Speak God's word over situations. Speak God's word over children, over marriages, over work, over whatever. Amen. The Lord showed me this past year, 2015-16, working on, the, on driving a school bus. And I told you all this before. I prayed, I cried, I said, Lord, what in the world is going on? And that's what I was sharing with you. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord, and see, won't I? I said, well, Lord, i got to prove you if i never proved you before because the hours that i got to work and the bills that i got to pay, it's got to be you. And the Lord spoke to me just as plain saints, and this is, a, this is something for someone in this congregation. And he says, you're going to show these people that it's not Delcy Board of Ed that's pay, taking care of you. I'm taking care of you. And I went in there and I told them. I said, you cut my hours? Guess what? God is putting me through a test, and I'm going to prove to y'all that he's taking care of me. I'm not going to want for nothing. Put my name down every now and then to get a little trip because I want to take a trip, whether I get it or not. I've been getting the trips. Well, thank you. I had a nice little trip on Friday. God is good. God is good, saints. He watch us. I was sharing with, um, with Elder on last week when Bishop was, was um, ministering, and I said, um, you know, it's amazing. I know what my paycheck is, and I know what monies go out of my account. I said, but when I check my account, I'm floored when I see what's in there. And I'm like, Jesus, you, you did this, didn't you? I know you did because ain't nobody put no money in my account because I would see it on the, my statement. But he multiplies. And, and Bishop said something, and I said, little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. Amen. When you have faith to believe, and, and I believe that's what where tithing comes in, tithing and offering. When you have enough faith to believe the Lord, and some of us, we get some big paychecks. And to look at that and say, 10%? Wow. Okay, who has control over my life? That paycheck or the person who signed the paycheck or Lord, you who allowed me to be here in the first place. Who has control over the person who's signing my paycheck? Amen. Amen. See, we, we, we get so caught up in the, te the, the, the technical part of it or the, the part of, you know, well, I got this, put your, um, they, they have your budgeting, put your outgoing here and your incoming there and level them, see what you gotta, what's got to go where. I told um, Deacon Swanson years ago, because he, he's a budget person, and he wrote out our budget, and he showed it to me. And I looked at it. I said, um, you made a mistake. You messed up. He said, what? Where? That's the money that's coming in. That's the money that's going out. I said, um, tithing is not a bill. The Lord showed me that. I didn't, it just came out my mouth. That one, that's the first time I ever said it. He looked at me. I didn't tell him like I knew what I was doing. <laughs> tithing is not a bill. You don't put tithing in a budget. First of all, you, start, you take your tithe out, then you work with what you got left. Right. You don't put no, nah. But this was a long time ago, y'all. He knew, babe in Christ, he know now. He knows now. He knows now. He's, he's good. So if y'all got tithing in your budget, tithing does not belong in your budget. Tithing is not a bill. We don't owe God like that. It belongs to him. All of it belongs to him. Who was that? Wasn't the bishop that said, what if he asked for the 90% and left us with 10? You know, we should try that and see just how much faith we got in the Lord to take care of us. Take one of your paychecks and give 90% and work on the 10 and see what God does for you. 
How many of us got enough faith to do that? <laughs> Rich young rulers, come on. What must I do to inherit eternal? Who's going to who's gonna take me up on that challenge? <laughs> we going to pray on that. We going to pray. God is good anyway, and he is blessing us abundantly. Amen. Saints, James 4 and 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yield, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Yield yourself to the Lord. Submit, withstand the action or effect of when you submit. First Peter 5 and 8 says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. We're not the only ones that's going through. The body of Christ is going through. But like Elder Heather said, we're going through. We're going through. We're pressing on to the mark. Amen. And he will flee from you, take flight, run away, retreat, make a quick exit. He's bolting. He's getting out of your way. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57 says, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing that the enemy can do to us if we stand in the word of God. The 16th chapter of Matthew, Jesus warns his disciples of the yeast and the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were arguing amongst themselves. Jesus, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to Jesus and said, so show us a sign of your coming. And he said, the only sign, he said, you look at the sky in the evening, and if it's red, you know that the weather's going to be fair that next day. But if it's red in the morning, you're going to have a bad day. You know these signs, but yet you can't know who I am and know what's happening. And as he's talking to the Pharisees, he tells his disciples, he says, beware of the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the yeast that is in them. And they're arguing about nobody brought any bread to eat. No, Y'all ain't bring no lunch. What are we going to eat? They, they all caught up in, in, in what they're going to eat, food. Because they heard Jesus said yeast, and uh, they didn't want to cross the, the river, and nobody have anything to eat. And the, the Lord looks at them and says, how many times did he tell them, you have such little faith. You're with me all the time. You see what I'm doing. You don't remember the 5,000 that I fed with the, 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 the two fish and the five loaves? The 4,000 that I fed with the seven loaves? And how much the abundance that was left over, and you're arguing over a lunch? Do you not know who I am? Wow. And he, he, they, they came to themselves when he says, you have such a little faith. And that was like a slap in the face to them. Yeah. And they came to themselves, and they realized what he was talking about. The yeast was sin. Mm -hmm. Saints, if Satan disguises himself mm -hmm. as the angel of light, his imps, his agents, are disguising themselves as servants of righteousness. Can you tell the difference between a true believer and a fake one? How many, I was sharing this, how many saw that? You, some people put some really good stuff up on, um, on Facebook, and they showed... They, people were laughing about it. And I said, it looks funny, but it's a serious situation because so many people in the body of Christ are being fooled. And they showed this evil looking wolf putting on sheep's clothing, putting on the costume of a sheep and said, many people do this on Sunday, getting ready for Sunday church. This is how they get dressed for Sunday church. So you have people pretending if Satan disguises himself. This is something to think about. And I'm not talking about going around judging folk. But the Lord wants us, he says, my, my children are not ignorant. He says, I would not have you ignorant of the devices of Satan. And he doesn't pull any punches. He doesn't care who you are, what level you are. He doesn't care where you are. 
He comes right in the midst of the churches, of the service, disguised to pull the people of God away and to pull their focus off of. Know the word of God. The, Jesus never compromised God's word. Amen. Not one time on this, the earth, on this earth when he walked did he compromise the word of God. When you begin to compromise, then you begin to move yourself out of position. When you're out of position, God can't use you. You're out of his protection. You can't hear his voice because you've moved yourself out of place. And every time you say something or, and, or adhere to or compromise the word of God, it's the enemy pulling you further and further away from being in the way, the word of God. These are the days that we're living in now. Did you see the one where they had the, um, the person with the black face with the rope around their neck? And the other ones, the white ones were around and they were all laughing. And this was, I believe, at one of part of Donald Trump's thing that they were doing. These are the days that we're living in. Don't be ignorant to what's going on around you. But stay in the word of God. Read it daily. Read it as much as you can. Because the more you read his word, the more you hear his, the, the, the word of God tells us, my children, my sheep, my children, my sheep, they hear my voice. And a stranger's voice, they will not follow. I know them and they know me. I don't care how much Satan can disguise himself. If you're in the word of God and you know what his word says, any, and, and he's, he, Satan can't follow the word of God directly. Right. He messes up all the time. Amen. Don't be so quick to jump at any and everything. Stand still. That's why Moses, the Lord told Moses to tell the children of God, because they were all, all over the place. And the Lord told them, stand still. Just be still. Be quiet so you can hear me. And see the salvation. Because the Lord will show you. He will not leave us ignorant. He will not, he doesn't have ignorant children. Second Corinthians eleven fourteen and 15. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed, transformed into an angel of light. This is what I was sharing with you. So y'all know I'm giving you word. In 2 Corinthians eleven fifteen. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Satan disguises himself as an angel of light, so it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Satan is an accuser, and this is how you will know him, because he will throw your past in your face. And though he may appear as an angel of light, his job is to accuse us. Forget those things of the past and press on for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Saints, keep heaven in view because soon and very soon we are going to see the king. God bless you. May God ever smile upon you. May his grace ever be on you. Stay in this press. Stay in the press. Don't give in. Keep on pressing. Keep on pressing. Praise God. We thank and praise God. If anyone desires prayer at this time,